Okay, guys, so here's age 24. Um, something that we need to know for this is that critical numbers are where f prime is equal to zero or f prime is undefined. There's a little um, table next to Susan's table that includes, you know, talks about that information. Um, okay, oh, actually, here are, um, that's, there's not four of them. Here are two. Okay, here are two local or relative extrema cases. Local extrema and relative extrema are the same thing. They just mean the highest or lowest y value um, within a certain like neighborhood. And that neighborhood could be a small neighborhood or a big neighborhood. Um, so they're the highest or lowest y value among the y values next to it, like, re like really close to it. Um, so anyway, we have two cases where we could have a smooth local min or a smooth local max. And when I say smooth, I mean, um, oopsie. Basically, I mean that the derivative exists because you could also have, we've talked about this in the past, like, like a case like this, we've got a local min there but the the function is is continuous but not differentiable at this point okay so the derivative is undefined right here but if this were smooth like this then the derivative would be defined it would be it would be zero okay so here we've got a smooth local min situation right there okay and at this point right here um we've got that f prime is zero, but then the question is, what about f double prime? Well, when you're thinking about f double prime, you need to consider concavity. So is this graph concave up or down at that point? It's concave up. So if the original function is, con let's say that this is f. Okay, so this, this function is f. All right, and so is this one. They're going to be f. So if the original function f is concave up, what does that mean about the second derivative? It is greater than zero. Okay, now here's another case with, with f. This time it has a smooth local max right up there. Okay, so at that point, what do we know about f prime? Remember, f prime is the slope of the tangent line. f prime is zero. Well, what about f double prime? For f double prime, so for f prime, you consider the slope of the tangent line. Or you can think of increasing or decreasing, but here it is neither increasing nor decreasing. Um, when you think of the second derivative, you think of concavity or inflection points. So here is f concave up or down, it's concave down. So f double prime is less than zero. Okay, now, so here's the directions. Given that f is continuous with the table of values below, um, so there's the table of values. So the fact that f is continuous means that there's no gaps. Like it's a, it's a continuous curve, so you'd connect all these points. So like, you know, um, for the x value of 5, there would be an output. For the x value of 8.00001, there would be an output. So they're not telling you that it's continuous just means that there's more going on then the table is, is showing you. Okay, so given that f is continuous with the table of values below, A, state the critical numbers of f from the table. Explain. Well, critical numbers, I said at the beginning, are where f prime is zero or undefined. So for part A, so where is f prime undefined or zero? So it's undefined, f, here's the f prime column. It's undefined at x equals negative three because f prime is undefined. It's asking you to explain. And then f prime is zero at eight and 20. x equals eight and x equals 20 because f prime is zero. Okay, so there's the critical numbers. For each critical number, state whether it's the location of a local maximum or minimum, explain, okay? If you can't tell, state can't tell. 
and there's no exp explanation needed for can't tell. Okay, so guys, on these set of problems, you're only going to be able to tell if you have a local max or min, if you've got one of these two smooth cases, okay? So the smooth extrema cases would be f prime is zero for both of them, okay? So you would need f prime to be zero. And you also would need f double prime either positive or negative. If, double, if f double prime is positive, that means that f is concave up. So you'd end up with a, with, um, you know, with a smooth min right there. And if f double prime was negative, that means that the original function f is concave down. So you'd end up with a smooth max. Okay, so you need this combination, f prime to equal to zero, that's the first thing you need. And then you need f double prime either positive or negative. So, um, yeah, so part B. All right, so for, for x equals 3, we need f prime to be 0 for this set of, for this set of, um, of exercises. So if f prime is undefined, well, that would also imply that f double prime is undefined anyway. But so you, you can't tell. So for x equals negative 3, can't tell. Okay. Um, and there's no explanation needed for can't tell. Now let's move on to x equals 8. x equals 8. Okay, so for x equals 8, you've got f prime 0 and f double prime is negative 1. So f double prime is negative. Okay, so let me do an aside. Um, I'm just thinking at x equals 8, f prime equals 0, and f double prime is less than 0. Okay, so if f double prime is less than 0, so that would mean f concave down. All right, so if f is concave down, all right, here's a situation where f would be concave down. So we're dealing with, I mean, you could just look at my pictures, but we're dealing with the smooth local max situation. So x equals 8. So at x equals 8, local max. And then we'll say because f prime is 0 and f double prime is less than 0. Okay, at x equals 20, all right, so let me continue the aside. I'm just like thinking it through, like with a picture. Okay, so aside at x equals, and I'm sort of being redundant here, but I just want to show the picture off to the side. At x equals 20, you have f prime is 0, and f double prime is 4, so this time f double prime and f double prime is positive, which means concave up. So if we draw, remember, concave up would be part of an upward parabola. So we've got this point, it, the point would look like that. So you've got this smooth local min. So um, local min because f prime is equal to zero and f double prime is greater than zero. Now for part C, they're asking to state any local maxes or mins from the table. Now, they're not asking you the locations of them. They're asking you what are they. So when they're asking you what are the local maxes or mins, they want the y values. So though at x equals eight, okay, so we, We've got, so local max, local max, it, it happens at x equals 8. 
and it's the actual y value. So now we're looking at the f column. So 4, so you could say 4 at x equals 8, or you could be like 4 equals f of 8. But you've got to pair the y value with somehow with its, with its input. Okay, and then we'll have local min. The local min is happening at 20, so it's negative 5. And that's happening at an input of 20. Okay, guys, um, let me know if you have any questions. I, I kind of like did that off the cuff. I mean, I, I put a lot of thought into the notes themselves, but then I could just kind of jump right into it. So let me know if you have any questions and I will talk to you later.